Hey, can you hear us now? We're back. <laughs> Banging Beers Podcast, episode 135. Uh, this is the beautiful thing of, uh, you know, trying to host and control all the boards and make sure everything's working properly. Sometimes you have some slip up. So we just deleted that episode, restarted over. Live chat is open. Come hang out with us. Let us know what you're drinking, what you're doing on this Sunday. It's Halloween. Are you handing candy out? Are you dressing up? Let us know. Um, we want to thank our sponsors before we start anything. Abaddon Tattoo Studio, a unique professional experience uh, in Pine Grove, Pennsylvania, and also Pottsville, Pennsylvania. They provide high-quality tattoos, piercings in a relaxed, professional, and sterile environment. Um, this episode and network is powered by Poddex. Poddex is unique. <clears throat> Sorry, interview questions and episode starting prompts in the palm of your hand. So whether you're new to podcasting or an existing broad broad broadcaster <laughs> looking to grow your audience or get more engagement, you're going to want to check out poddex.com. Use code IWEP network for 10% off your first order. And the Tree of Life Metaphysical Shop. So if you notice on the table, we have the chakras going up. We got, if you're here in studio, there's banners over our head. We have a lot of cool things. So they, they've been really, really kind to us and awesome people. We have some cool episodes coming out uh, showcasing the Tree of Life Metaphysical Shop. The newest one is the Ringtown Witch. Um, so if you want to check out that and the other ones coming up, head over to Truth Behind Illusion podcast. But they are dedicated to providing quality metaphysical and holistic goodies to you. Not only do they have an online presence, but there's a brick and mortar store located in Ringtown, Pennsylvania. They have something for everyone. So stop in, shop online and see what you can find. Come grow with us. So check them out. All of our sponsors, everything like that is located on the IWEPnetwork.com website. Links to every show on the network is on there. Leave us a review. If you are listening to this later on audio, feedback is super important. Word of mouth helps us grow so much. So if you are, take a screenshot of your phone, because this is what I have. This is, this is something I'm learning from a guest that's coming on Tornado Tag, Chris Van Fleet. I think it's very smart to have your audience try this, but I listen to my phone and I'm like, man, I didn't, I, I, you know, I didn't show any love or support. I listened, but I didn't really show any love or support because I was listening to my car. I was at work. Just take a screenshot of your phone of, of the of the screen that you're listening to, and then later on be like, "Hey, listen to this episode. Everyone, go check it out. I thought it was really good. So just try that out. We'll, we'll you know take a screenshot and see what you like." Um, also, we have our Patreon. So we have a dollar, our five dollar, or it's open for whatever you want to do. It's just general support to help us grow, help pay some bills, get some better equipment. And as I said, that it's not loading. Mm -hmm. um, there it goes. So we have a few new members. So Kelly, who just joined the network, she uh, she's getting a, a plug out there for her business, Crystal Mountain Healing. Thank you, Kelly, for the support. Uh, Tommy Borsrath, Tree of Life Metaphysical Shop, Higher Than Other Words Podcast, Jay Hoare, and Austin Blackwell. Thank you all for your support. Also, with the IWP Network, we do have on the um, website review tab. So if you leave us a review or read some reviews out, if you just leave a comment, we'll put it up in the chat if you're watching live. Um, we have some fun stuff we're going to talk about today. We have two beer, two brew, beers, brews, whatever you want to call them, from uh, Drunken Rabbit. <laughs> I said Drunken Monkey last time. That's a plug for miners. Well, is, is this still a thing? No, uh, no, that wasn't Ashland. Oh, Ashland, Drunken <laughs> yeah. Monkey. Good call. And uh, Brew Hop, which is uh, beers that we'll explain a little bit later how we got them. Heidi's joining us today. People are like, is she drinking beer now? She loves it. Spoiler, she doesn't. <laughs> um, but we we wanted to turn this into like kind of like a crossbreed between pop, pop, pop culture and beer. So it's not always going to be just about the beer. We're going to talk about some stuff in between. Get to know each other. You get to know us as an audience. And then we have the beers while we're doing it. So today we're going to be talking about horror movies, what we've been re recently watching, as well as uh, some of our favorite horror movies of all time. So once again, if you're in the chat watching, comment your favorite horror movies or what you're into right now. Because it is Halloween. It's going to get spooky. Bob, read off our first beer here so I can stop talking and drink. <laughs> um, all right. This is Oktoberfest from the Drunken Rabbit Brewing Company of uh, South Hadley, Massachusetts. Uh, it's a Marzen. It comes in at 6% ABV. Um, it's been logged in a total of 60 times. Um, Prost. It's that time of year for Festa and all across Europe festivals are in full effect. What better time to release our tribute to Oktoberfest, the festival of festivals? Yeah, and this is a uh, six percent. Oh, you already said all that stuff. Sorry. Um, I will say this. This this is this is fucking good. 
and it's good. This is probably one of my favorite Oktoberfests I've ever had. And the, the flavor profile is uh, <laughs> toasty, malty, <laughs> caramelly, smooth, and sweetness. Now, all right, Heidi, the person who hates beer, what, what did you get anything out of that? Beer. Just tastes like beer. Yeah. All right. I I get all that the roasty and the caramel. Like yep. it's and the sweet. The sweet. That's that's really, really good. Yeah. I don't know. It just tastes like beer. We're gonna make you a man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe Rocky a little bit of caramel like at the end, but that's fantastic. <laughs> I'll tell you what, brew daddy is still one that I think for me, Oktoberfest wise is up there. But this this is really good. I'm not protecting the four at all in this one. Yeah, that's really, really good. Drunken Monkey, fantastic Oktoberfest. Uh, now, where did you... Drunken Rabbit. Drunken Rabbit, sorry. <laughs> Monkeys, rabbits, bears, oh my. Um, Bob, where did you acquire these beers that we're having on this episode? And um, So uh, th these are vacation beers again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, both of these actually are from uh, stops on day two. These are uh, both from Massachusetts. Um, the Drunken Rabbit Brewery was our second stop of the day in South Hadley. Um, I think I did a flight and two full pours there. Um, a great place. Uh, everything there was fantastic. Uh, the staff was really nice. Uh, they have a little bit of merchandise. Uh, if, if you're into the t-shirts and the hats and the stickers, you know me. <laughs> um, I, I had a great time there. Um, go back any chance I have. Now, we have to, we do have a, we want to do like a group trip one day. It could be the network, but definitely TBI uh, to Boston to go to like Salem and, and all that stuff. I wonder how many breweries are in Salem. It'd be interesting to know or like around Salem so we can go get in, lit up and then go get spooky. <laughs> Lower our veil even yeah. more if you would say. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's really, really good. So let's, we'll get on our first little topic here, the movies. So we'll start with ladies first. Oh, yeah. You know, Heidi, what if you had to say, sorry, I was in a bar. We were in a bar last night. There was a um, cover band Mother. where it was like, but it was like a smoking bar where everyone can smoke cigarettes. And I, my, my nose is killing yeah, I'm me. A mess. I feel like I'm talking very nasally. So if you, if I sound stupid, I'm <laughs> like sorry. Thumb. Yeah. Uh, nothing that a little beer can't fix, but um, <laughs> some water. <laughs> what are some of your favorite, like your, like, let's do like, let's start number one. We'll start number one backwards. Like. It doesn't have to be in a certain order, but something just really pops to your head. Favorite horror movie of all time? Scream. Scream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with That's that. That's my favorite movie. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. All time, all genres, favorite yeah. movie. Yeah. Wow. And then Halloween, you can't not watch. It beats Halloween. Ferris Bueller for you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I just learned something of my wife. <laughs> but then Halloween, you can't not watch well, it. I, mean, I didn't ask for part two yet. I don't care. I don't care. I'm moving <laughs> on. <laughs> 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 just comes in hijacks the show um no i would agree halloween is yeah. definitely i think both scream and halloween both trans transcended horror movies after they were made because after both were made everything after that tried to be that like halloween was made and then everyone's like all right let's make more slashers let's do this let's try that how can we recreate the monster character like a universal monster but make it like a slasher and it's attacking teenagers but we'll slide some messaging in there or don't have sex or do drugs and <laughs> yeah yeah it had all that fun stuff and then scream was almost the same thing except it turned into like that say by the veil dawson's creek style with the slasher horror movie thing and even those sitcoms kind of like it was like oh high school kids like it, it just went for that that niche and everything tried to recreate it even in the non-hard genre like that sitcom style like that age demographic to make stuff after it was kind of because of scream which is kind of neat uh bill uh probably nightmare on elm street yeah more specifically probably probably more specifically, probably Dream Warriors. <laughs> Dream. Yes. I, I honestly think that that's one of the best in the in the franchise. It's that's a really fun one. Yeah. At that point, though, in Dream Warriors, you're not even afraid of Freddy anymore. No, but it's just like the whole cast of characters. They mm -hmm. aren't your your normal like group of yeah. people <laughs> that would be in a movie. Isn't so, that the Nintendo Power Glove? Isn't it's that? like the Power Glove. Yeah, and yeah. Like like that really cool wheelchair that the kids in oh, yeah, and yeah. like. Like they're all fighting Freddy, but it's just like <laughs> the way that they do it. It's, it's not, super campy and fun. Yeah. yeah, and it's not your typical like group of kids of against him. Yeah, at all like, like kids nerds. that yeah, like nerds. They're 
It'd be like if Not Cool in High School fought Freddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. I I would have not ever expected you to say that's your favorite of all time. Yeah. It's up. Yeah. It's up there. I it's like on that. my list. That's a fun. Bob, favorite um, horror movie? I kind of have a tie. Um, um, uh, we talked about the last time. Uh, uh, the original Pet Cemetery, I thought was very well done. Yeah, and uh, I actually like the the ending scene. Actually, made the hair stand up on my arms. Mm-hmm. And uh, if if we're gonna go old school, it was actually um, probably no one else knows or remembers it, but it was actually a made for TV movie called Gargoyles. Uh, I want to say it was like maybe 1971 or 1972. Um, I'm, I feel like I've heard of it, but I don't think I've ever um, seen it. It's a, if I remember right, the, the main character is a professor and it's his daughter and uh, uh, they're, they're traveling across the desert in the Southwest and uh, uh, they stumble across like the last surviving colony of real gargoyles. And um, I'm going to type uh, this in on IWDB and I guarantee I'm getting like, a cartoon first. Yeah. For sure. Oh, I'm sure yeah. you will yeah. too. Yeah, this is way before it does it other than the name. Dan, yeah. Dan says he remembers the gargoyle movie. He said it was great. I'm going to, I'm going to look it up right now. 1972. Um, I'm gonna guess it's that one. Oh, oh boy, these these gargoyles look pretty dope. Should I add it to my list. <laughs> yeah, I started right last time you guys were talking. I was like writing them down. <laughs> the ones is this, that is this the cast here? I'm gonna say probably. Yeah. All right. So yeah, this is. Uh, let's see if I can find anything here. Yeah, the gargoyles look pretty sick. <laughs> look at them. Uh-huh. That's pretty good for 72. Oh, uh, yeah, that's yeah. definitely it. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be hard to see on the yeah. screen. <laughs> yeah, that that looks crazy. I'm trying to find like a write-up of it. Uh, it got a 6.1 out of 10 on IWTV. Uh, it says, not terrible film, but pretty sure uh, Cornell Wilde is a bit is a bit embarrassed to be in such a production. <laughs> um Where's the plot summary? Where are we at? It's uh, there's no sex or nudity. You're good there. Violence and gore is mild. Profanity is none. Alcohol, drugs, alcohol, smoking, none. Boo. Uh, <laughs> frightening, intense scenes, mild. Uh, the plot summary is an anthropologist and paleontologist and his daughter, while traveling through the Southwest United States, stumble upon a colony of living, breathing gargoyles. The tagline is, "They're coming for you." Barbara, no, that, that, no Barbara, <laughs> no Barbara in this one. No Barbara, but I, yeah, I'm gonna look that up. Uh, actually, while I'm there, I should might as well just say, it, this is a beautiful thing about IMDb. It'll tell you um, how to watch it. So if you have the IMD, IWTV, uh, IMDb app, there's a lot. IWEP, IWTV. <laughs> I have a lot going on in my life with those acronyms. Um, you can watch it free. So if you have the app where you can research movies, they they have a little streaming service. Oh, that's cool. And they put movies on. I think there's like ads in it. So every yeah. now and then you'll get an ad. But Gargoyles is free. Who does that too sometimes though? I don't mind it. Mm-mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but if you you can watch that free. So if you're, if you're listening to this and you're like, holy shit, I love that movie. Or you're like, man, it sounds interesting. I want to check it out. There it is. That's how you can watch it. Look, I do the homework for you live on, on the air. Uh, what did Dan say here? The makeup uh, was great for that time. And uh, that's it. Yeah, he agrees. Awesome. That's a cool. See, I like this. This is where I you drink beer. And it's like a high school lunch table except with alcohol. And you're like, <laughs> where's the food? <laughs> yeah, you have your snowballs. <laughs> Just don't eat them on microphone, please. <laughs> crunch, crunch, crunch. Uh, I would I see. I'm tough. I'm I'm kind of with Heidi with Scream. It's one of my favorite horror movies of all time. Uh, Cause it's a it's a mur- it's a murder mystery. It's a horror movie. It's a slasher. It's a whodunit. It's got a great cast. Mm-hmm. There's there's humor in it. It's got great lines. Murder mystery and whodunit. It, it goes out of genre, but uh, you got to go with Clue. Yeah, oh, Clue's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. But I think if I had to pick, it's not so much horror, but more of a sci-fi, supernatural, and a musical, which is kind of crazy because I don't like musicals. But I make it a point to watch this movie every single year. I am a Rocky Horror Picture Show fan. Love it to death. I'll watch it all the time while Heidi was getting raked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's what i called it um i i was in the other room waiting and i had the rocky Horror picture show uh playlist playing on youtube and i was just sitting there on my phone listening to people were walking by like what the hell's going on in there and i'm just sitting there on my phone There's people dressed up like that last night yeah yeah it's a, it's a great movie i think that's my one of my favorites but uh since you gave us two what's another <laughs> one another horror movie you look forward to I don't know. I always just watch all the slashers. They're my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's crack this next bear open here. So this is going to be called Mule Kick. 
once again from uh, Drunken Rabbit. <laughs> and uh, this is a ginger beer. So uh, actually, this is a, a, I'll read the description, but just so you know ahead of time, uh, this is ginger and pineapple. And um, if this sits out long enough to get warm, there, there's cayenne pepper in here as well, but you won't notice it until it gets warm. <laughs> so, Does right. it get like spicy? Bob, this has a, a, not as bad, but this has a little bit of a blue, blue frog smell going on. I I, I had a can of this already. I thought it was fantastic. I love this. It has and a little bit of that. Like, and um, I actually I left half the can sit out so it would get warm on purpose, and I like it even better when the pepper comes yeah. out. It it pours like a. Is a, it like spicy or just like like, like, like a pepper? Spicy. But, but at first, it's just like the ginger burn. Yeah. But then once once the pepper gets in, you you know it's pepper. Oh. Um, so I'm uh, so happy you're trying beers. This is fun. I don't like it. So, uh, <laughs> Mule Kick from uh, Drunken Rabbit Brewing of South Hadley, Massachusetts. Uh, it's classified as a hard ginger beer. It comes in at 7%. Uh, it has been logged in 124 times and averages a 3.64. Mule Kick is a light, crisp ginger beer that does not use any gluten based products in the process. It is easy drinking and not filling. Brewed with 300 pounds of fresh ginger and 250 pounds of pineapple pulp with a touch of cayenne pepper and a slight dose of lactose sugar to back sweeten and bring everything together. This can be enjoyed straight out of the can, on the rocks with a lime, and for a real meal mm. kick feeling mixed with dark rum or vodka. <laughs> In the world of mules, there are no rules. <laughs> and the flavor profile is ginger, spicy, peppery, strong, and dry. Yo, it kicks you like so a mule. So it definitely <laughs> smells like ginger. It smells like a fart to me. It has a no, little bit it of a smells fart. like ginger. Like you go to the sushi and they give you the ginger. That's exactly what it smells like. I think it's fantastic. I love it. Um, I'm gonna be. I'm not. So it kicks you. It has a kick to it. Now, uh, what? So you? They, they, they gave you the little um. I mean, stuttering. Jesus Christmas. This is fucking... right, right, right away, I, I get the ginger burn. And yeah. it, it's like as soon as you say, oh, ginger burn, then I can taste the pineapple. Yeah. And then, um, uh, like they said, there's a bit of lactose in there. And then the, the sweet comes in. But, like, uh, if we let this sit for 15 more minutes, I guarantee you, you'll if you can't notice it already, you'll catch I, the, the pepper, pepper on the back. Yeah, yeah. I got yeah. it. Yeah. I, yeah, I get it on the follow through. I, yep. It's different. That, but I don't hate it. No. I've... I can see liking it over ice with the lime, like they suggest in the. So mm. this is this is a seltzer, right? No, it's a ginger beer. The ginger beer is a real thing. That's it's like yeah. a style. Yeah, yeah. Because they did like there ain't no rule laws when you're like they kind of did like a little white claw reference. It does drink like a seltzer almost. It has that bubbly carbonated. Yeah. Like I'd, almost I'd like say a soda. it's within the family, yeah. But it's class. It's a ginger beer. I didn't really taste the pineapple though. But it was like all ginger and then the pepper at oh. the end. I had a burp, but like it stuck. <laughs> it like glued itself to my sternum. That's fucking. That's an interesting. Did you even make a face with it? I don't know. Take a little another whip. Away. I don't want. Take another whip with that. It's not as bad as like the beer, like regular beer. So you, I, but it hits like it hits in the back, dude, like you the like, pepper. You like ginger though, don't you? Mm, I don't know, not so much. Not like <laughs> fresh ginger. Like the pepper gets you. In the dude, back. You can't talk after you drink it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's very gingery. Like I don't taste the pineapple. Your though. brain has to reset after you have a sip. You, you, you drink this and you try to have a conversation. You're like, just give me a second. I gotta get my life together. <laughs> Holy fuck. I don't think I could drink like a lot of that. Yeah, I don't hate it, but it's definitely interesting. I don't know yeah. how to score it. It wouldn't, it, like, if I drank, like, it would probably, like you said, on the ice with yeah. lime, like, I feel like that would probably be best. Wow. Yeah, I, I think it's brilliant. I, I love it. Could you drink a pint of this? Absolutely. I've already done it. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's... What about you, Bill? Uh, probably. Really? I probably could. Yeah. But like I said, over ice with, and just like this is a sip, like to yeah, sip it, like yeah. slow drinking. I, I don't think I can just crack the can and drink out if, of it. If someone were to chug this, you're a psycho. <laughs> oh my goodness, Bob, did you chug it? <laughs> no, no, I, I didn't chug mine, but okay. um, but yeah, that's um, it does say something like you could just great. sip on and like 
yeah hang out and- it, it, it it's in it's in that family i guess the ginger beer and i i just don't really know the style but to me this is kind of like if you had like something on the rocks how you were saying yeah. and just yeah. slow burn it or it's like that it has a little bit of that uh seltzer style to it where it's very light and or or even use it in bubbly. like a moscow mule instead of just like a regular ginger beer because it has the extra on the after burp i get the um the pepper and the uh and the, the ginger well that's i i don't know how how big a batch they make at a time but i mean uh they said there's 300 pounds of ginger in it yeah so. it's definitely full ginger that's like you a can full smell meat. it you can taste it that's yeah. that's, a, that's almost me as ginger 300 pounds <laughs> oh, a little a little short a little shy. a lot <laughs> it's huge dressed up as a ginger roots <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> swimming around in a vat <laughs> so that's another out. thing like I, I might be more used to it too because like at home rosa makes fresh ginger tea all the time oh okay so, so i you know i drink that on a regular basis oh, I wonder, is that good is it good yeah, yeah like, I like very it. gingery or I, I just, literally you wash the root you chop it up and you boil it in water it's, wow <laughs> yeah i don't think i've ever had that i've had like fresh like if you get sushi they always give you ginger to, yeah. like, and i don't really love it it kind of just tastes like it tastes like ginger but like soapy <laughs> well because i i i think they put it in vinegar or something mm, too that makes sense it's yeah. not just like the fresh root yeah all right so i know you kind of touched on a little bit heidi but um when it comes to horror movies you said you're more of the slasher fan correct mm-hmm. if you had to pick another style of movie that's not slasher what what genre do you look for uh i don't know like not really sci-fi as much and i feel like the like paranormal is like it's good but i feel like it's all the same (laughs) even though slashers are all the same too i don't know i just like it's like the like like, the slashers are all the same but seem to be more fun yeah yeah yeah. so maybe like psychological or something like thriller now would you consider like a freddy a jason or michael myers a slasher but would you also categorize them in like almost like a monster movie too you can because there's an element could, to yeah. them that makes them a I guess little... you could because they don't really die so yeah, there's like an element to them where they're more than just a human yeah where like i feel like scream they're they're human mm-hmm. um that's a slasher like even like my bloody valentine i mean that really wasn't paranormal it appears as he's paranormal spoiler yeah. alert but it's not um or those are kind of in that thing but i think if i had to pick uh my next genre it'd be like monster movies i love monster movies i like a creature i like like even, the bigger the monster the better if it's destroying a city count me in but yeah i'm into the monster movies i like i like to see the special effects and how a monster is created um yeah that's my that'd be my genre bill what about you uh probably psychological psychological yeah what, what would be a movie that would fall into that category for you um probably thinking probably like the changeling like i know that's okay. kind of monster adjacent like a hereditary like, would be like a psychological like that kind of stuff there yeah. too where like like invasion stuff more, too. yeah like it's more in your head than yeah like anything physical mm-hmm. like it's like a person alone in a house and things are happening but it might not be ghosts it might just be some guy that lives inside the walls <laughs> or <they're tripping laughs> on that. like just like like knocking on the walls what was stuff. that the one boy. you watched <laughs> yeah what was that the one, one you watched yeah. where it was a guy and he like rented an apartment out to a girl and he would like hide in the, the walls. resident yeah it was hillary swank i think that was kind of fucked up yeah yeah like yeah like those ones are yeah like, i like those or like a home invasion great. like yeah. hush hush is really yeah. good uh what the about purge you Bob? movies yeah. i don't know the, the um, i was always really fond of the like we said last week the the older monster movies you know the like the the guy in the rubber suit godzillas and stuff mm-hmm. like that uh, uh they they still hold a soft spot in my heart um, yeah um i i'm a big sci-fi fan um but i mean but anything that's well done is is watchable there's um a lot of war movies um there's a a german movie if you're into reading subtitles it's called dead snow (laughs) it's like evil dead meets (laughs) nazi zombies oh you know what i think i I think I've seen that. It was kind of cool. <laughs> like they're there is like they go out on a ski trip and they're out in the middle of nowhere in a cabin and they find these coins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there's fucking Nazi zombies awaken. Yeah, I, I, I didn't get to see the end of it, but I, I think I saw about 80 percent of that. And then I had to leave for something. Have you ever seen and this is kind of like a sci fi slash horror comment. Have you ever seen Sharknado? No. 
I I know about it, but no, I haven't seen it. <laughs> I oh, like those. I like, I I like made, nine of them. I think they made. Yeah, they made There's several. So many. Of them. The craziest one is like <laughs> a plane is flying through a hurricane, <laughs> and the shark jumps out of the. Actually, that might be a megalodon movie. Is that ca- and, so? Is that like monster? Would you consider that monster? Because like I like those like cheesy ones like that. And yeah, with the like the giant alligators and like, like the, 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 anaconda like. Uh, f- from the asylum, dude. She's that, watched... that just clearly <laughs> like take a movie that exists and change like like a letter in yeah, the yeah. title to... where it's like a, the, the the big Zombie box office Beaver. version yeah. comes out yeah. and they yeah. do like the spoof of it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like 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 immediately too. <laughs> like, 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 they, they were yeah. shooting it the same yep. weekend. Yeah, yeah. No, like what are you guys doing over there? <laughs> I'm gonna copy your homework, but change something. Okay, let's change this. You do it. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> there was one like that where it was almost the same movie. But I think the one that was the B version was better than the one the that was per- version. that was put out in theaters. And it was the whole, the premise was people were doing an autopsy on a body that was like possessed or had this weird paranormal element to it. And the one that was promoted all over TV and all over the thing was the one the girl from Pretty Little Liars. Oh, uh, possession of Hannah Grace or yeah, something. that one was pushed all over TV, and then there was one that was went, went straight to Netflix where it was like a father and son. Autopsy of Jane Doe. The oh, they, yeah, that one was that awesome. one was, was so good. That, that was the other really one was good. good too, but that that one was definitely better. Yeah, yeah, that that was the autopsy of Jane Doe was if Emil Hirsch and yeah. um, I can't think of what his dad's name was. Uh, yeah, he was a pretty big name now yeah. too. That that's, one was that's real good. I, it, it's like there's like three people in the whole movie, yeah, and it's yeah. just so unnerving. Yeah, like well, that's towards the end, like more spirits start showing yeah, up, but, but it, it was it was creepy as fuck. Yeah. yeah, that was a good one. If you're looking for a horror, that was pretty. That was on Netflix forever. I don't know if it's, it's still on. There. Um, probably might Shutter. Be on Shutter or something now. I think. Yeah, if if, if you're that. if you're listening to this, you're like, man, I want to dive back into horror movies tonight or sometime this week because you know Halloween got me in the spirit. I think Shutter's like seven bucks a month, mm-hmm. yeah, and it's it's awesome. Like if you're into that B-rated stuff, that all that's there. They have old school stuff, they, black and yeah. white. They have a little bit of everything. It's a they've really got good a service. instead of the Yule, Yule log, log. Yeah. for Christmas, yeah. there's like a Halloween one. Yeah. It's just like a pumpkin or something. I yeah. can't remember. <laughs> the Ghoul log. Yeah, the Ghoul, the ghoul log. log. That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Not like Call of Duty Ghoul log. No. Yeah. G- no. Yeah. Ghoul. G H O U. Ghoul. Um. <laughs> I, yeah, for me, I always say go back to Monsters. One of my favorite movies of all time is, uh, and I know Header's not here to to shit on me, so I'm gonna get away <laughs> with it. I love I love the zombie. I love zombies. I do like zombies. Yeah, I think they're creepy. It plays into the human element, but mm-hmm. like a human turned into a monster. Um, the original Dawn of the Dead, mm-hmm. is my yep. favorite, one of my favorites of all time. Love that movie. I always wanted to go to the mall. I went there. I got to the front doors, and it might have been, it might as well have been the zombie apocalypse because it was closed. It was closed. I couldn't for go Easter. The, it was for Easter. Easter I yeah. It was, it was the birthday of, uh, no, it was the zombie Jesus day, and I couldn't go into the zombie mall to see it. That was pretty. I do cool. like zombie movies and like vampires and stuff like that. So. All right. Let's get our next one cracked here. Let's get into our, our, our spooky beer, the Bruja. Now, bro, while, while you're pouring this, Bob, let us know where you got, you found these. So, uh, again, this was another uh, day two on the vacation stop. Uh, These were picked up in Massachusetts. Uh, We stopped at a place called the Rumble Seat Bar and Grill in Chicopee for lunch. Chicopee. Um, I would buy a T-shirt from there. Welcome to Chicopee. It's a cool town name. um, I had actually, um, these were on the the can list. Um, I'd never heard of the brewery before. They actually had three on the list, and uh, but the other one was sold out. So um, we got two. All right. I like how they spell it. That's pretty clever. Yeah. So it's spelled like <laughs> brew, B R E W J J A. Yeah. Because all oh, the J in Spanish is the H sounds. Yes. Yeah. Bruja. Yeah. I, I first danced said Bruja. And they're like, you're an idiot. I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're an idiot. Uh, at work, when you say, I, I'm in a group chat. And everyone, a lot of people there are, are Spanish. And if you say something funny in the chat, they write J A J A J A. Yep. And it cracks me up. Like I love it. <laughs> so then I see them later. I'm like, ja 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 ja. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I know. Or if they say like, uh, can you handle this email? All right, just C. I put a C, <laughs> not an S I. <laughs> I'm really funny. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> you think you are? <laughs> they probably hate me. Um. So this is called the. Uh, oh my goodness. This beer is everything for me. Did you see the name of this? 
Yep. You know, you know, you know where I'm going with this, right? I'm pretty sure. It's uh, there's a wrestling move called the Spanish Fly, and it's really cool. So what they do is I, I I get like my arm over your shoulder, and then you put your arm over my shoulder, and I do a backflip, and you do a front flip. And it's fucking insane looking, especially it's done from a top rope. So this is a, a little bit of supernatural as well as pro wrestling. So this is the Bruja Superfly. Um, I don't know what's in this yet, but I will already say this. It smells fantastic. Um, Spanish Fly, Passion Fruit Mango from mm. Bruja Brewing of Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, they are actually calling this a New England Hazy IPA. Uh, it comes in at 5.9% ABV, and the description is pretty to the point. It just says brewed with mango and passion fruit. Uh, the flavor profile is mango, passion fruit, bright, citrusy, and aromatic. Definitely smelled like the mango. And the passion and the fruit, fruit, yeah. I think you might be into this. I don't know. It's really light body. Okay, it's not terrible. Oh my god! We are getting her. You get we're, like that beer at the end, though. <clears throat> you get that One like beer us. hit at the end. That's really light bodied. It. The, all right, so the light, best yeah. way to describe this is this is uh this would be whatever uh, Massachusetts version of like Yingling Flight and uh, uh, right, icy mango. light mango, kind of like from yeah. Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. It has that really light bodied uh, ice like uh, icy light uh, Yingling light Yingling Flight. With the with the mango, so this is kind of like a raging eagle almost, but I think it's got more better. Passion fruit than mango. <laughs> yeah, the the, pa the passion fruit makes the mango not as sweet or tart. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense, the, it, it balances it a lot better. But this is really really good. I don't know if I like. I don't know if it's the residual smell of the last beer that I kind of was off putting in my glass of well because when you cracked it and it was passing around, I smelled it and it smelled fantastic. And now in my glass, it kind of. Not not a great smell, but it also could be from the last beer. Yeah, I still smell. I smell the fruit, but if you're watching Alon, comment. Let us know uh, some of your favorite horror movies. Maybe we have not heard of it, or something uh, we can agree on, or tell you you're terrible for your opinions. Uh, we'll have some fun. <laughs> um, speaking of, I want to come back to you real quick, Bob. Nightmare on Elm Street. We watched the remake again the other day. You mean Bill? Bill. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. Bob. Bill. Uh, yep. The double B's over here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I watched we watched the remake the other day and I, I, I feel it obviously I think people hate it because it's not Robert England, but as a movie, I don't think it's terrible. It, it wasn't bad. It was just I think the problem is a lot of the reboots they try to lean too far into the backstory that mm -hmm. most people already know instead of just like kind of kind of hitting the ground running. Yeah. Like just saying our if everyone knows this character, so let's just I agree, have fun but I think instead of telling the because that's like Rob Zombie's Halloween. Even he did the same thing. Oh, like, yeah. too much, yeah. like he went a little too much back instead of just saying, "You already know it's Michael Myers. Mm -hmm. You already know the story." Yeah, but he so like either the make back, I, either make make a whole entire movie about him as a kid, mm -hmm. and end that movie with him killing his sister. Yeah, and then make the next movie be when he's older. Yeah, and comes back instead of splitting it like. Half and half. Mm -hmm. Just I feel make like the full change the backstory though. It wasn't like because in the first Halloween, oh, he's I mean, definitely not like, like like Andy always complains. Yeah. He makes everything <laughs> white trash. Yeah, <laughs> white trash. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, look, like his answer to everything is <laughs> long hair, unwashed <laughs> white people. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> Where, I hey, like... let's just make this family white trash, white trash. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they created this monster. Yeah. <laughs> um. I think I think with the the Nightmare on Elm Street, and I do agree with you. That's what a lot of re reboots and remakes try to do. But I think the cool thing about the Nightmare on Elm Street is the idea of Freddy in the original ones. You were cheering for him, right? Yep. And I think the reason why people like cheer for him, obviously, he's he's one of like what they kind of tried to make his character be was one of the most despicable things in human history. Like even when you attack children, mm -hmm. and they always said like, no, 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 he's not what you think he is. He's just a child murderer. He's what, not. Wasn't he's, there a whole story with that, though? The reason why they changed it was because there was something like that. Actually something happened. actually yeah. happened around the same time yeah. the movie was going to come out. And they were like, no, too, yeah. too, too soon. Too, too soon. So yeah. we're going to get rid of that aspect and just make him attack children like as like, harm them yeah. as for murder. Where the reboot, they're like, 
no, no, no. Did this. <laughs> Freddie is a scumbag. But the way they, they, I, I personally like the way they did it, where they had you think the whole time, like they killed an innocent man. Yeah. yeah. And then the kids were like, we fucked, like our parents are scumbags. And then you find out, boom, no, he yeah. 100% was into this. And it, it, it added another element where it's like, so like for me, Freddie's a cool character. Robert England makes Freddie almost too likable so he's like the leprechaun yeah. we're halfway through the series you're like you're not even rooting against him anymore like you don't want him to die you're like get him <laughs> fucking fuck those dream warriors get kill every one of them where this new freddy it's like no like fuck that guy yeah. you know what i mean like it's 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 i don't know it, it made it more it made freddy scary again i know a lot of people hate like remakes but i don't know i like them i like to see like the different like views i mean obviously rob zombie yeah i didn't hate the first no, one but, but the second one went yeah that was way too, too off the rail <laughs> way <laughs> like, too much way too much but like i usually like the remakes i like to see how like someone else's view is taking it and what they're gonna do with it like i don't know i don't hate them yeah um i i what i didn't get a chance to watch it but the scream tv show Oh, I liked it. it was yeah, did I, they play it into fun. the movie series at all with that, or was it not a really. complete thing? It's kind of its own thing. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Is there any horror movie remakes that you watched the original and then seen a remake of it and you're like, okay, I hated it or I liked it? Um. Yeah, I'm usually not a big fan of remakes either. <laughs> um. I know, like a, a big one from like I, I would say like that transcended from your you as a child for like our generation. That was the like Omen. Yeah, that's been redone a whole bunch. Yeah, so, I, I never saw the remake. See, I don't mind um, remakes. I thought I, they no, were good. You know, I haven't seen the remake of uh, Pet Cemetery. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen the remake of Freddy. Um, I haven't seen the reboot for Amityville Friday Hartford. the Thirteenth. Uh, um, there's, there's a reboot for Carrie. Yeah, not long. Yeah, good. I didn't I see didn't that. Um, then um. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I saw Rabid, but uh, I never saw the original. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought the remake was pretty good, but again, um, um, I never saw the original, so I don't yeah. have anything to to compare to it to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's the uh, the remakes are fun. I I I like to experience them with modern day technology and Evil Dead was good. Yeah, well, Evil Dead. It part two is just part one <laughs> with the special effects they wanted in part one but they thought yeah. it'd be funny just to name it part two there's no continuation of a and story the, well, no, not, I mean, no meaning the, 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 oh, the remake yeah t yeah. alvarez one yeah yeah i thought it was cool yeah i wanted more from the universe we never got it um video games coming soon yep that that looks like a lot of fun yeah it's like a hide and seek style game yep. um and on that too with remakes there's also i started a new listening to a podcast where they go through movie scripts that were never made oh yeah Ooh. and they did um this whole month they did all halloween scripts that never made and they did a one on quentin tarantino's That's treatment cool. for i think it was halloween six oh. that was going to be halloween 666 <laughs> and it was michael and the man in black going on a road trip on route 66 and going to diners and eating and michael just murdering everybody <laughs> <laughs> that was the idea <laughs> of his movie <laughs> so it was I like so it was like like a fear and loathing in las vegas <laughs> but with michael myers just <laughs> going and murdering people but there was another we just one. was at the bar store where the drugs came in <laughs> yep there was another one though that sounded uh neat with um was called well there was supposed to be a halloween verse uh so michael myers versus pinhead okay movie where what happens is uh what's her face he heather from hellraiser it's been a long time the main girl from that well michael shows up and it's her and jamie lloyd together in a like a group of survivors group <laughs> and michael kills the girl from hellraiser and then pinhead shows up and is all pissed off so then he goes after jamie lloyd and takes her and then michael solves the lament configuration <laughs> to go after <laughs> after pinhead it's still better but, than it's i still think it's better than cult of michael myers yep <laughs> but um and then there was another one with jamie lloyd where she has her own blood at the hospital because Michael attacks her so often. <laughs> so her blood transfusions because <laughs> it's like this is going on. It's too going on. Come donate. We'll put it in the cooler. <laughs> but but but. but... 
but the idea is that uh because her he's after her because she's because she's cursed with the mark of the thorn and it's in her blood Mm -hmm. so a nurse screws up and mixes her blood in with the rest of the blood so then so then people get (laughs) blood transfusions that that need it there's like six people that get it and they get her blood so now the movie is Michael now. Instead of just being after her, he has to murder these six other people. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened at home. And they Kills. said and they said that um in the podcast, one guy goes, It would have been a great moment. They're like, So we know Michael never talks, but can you imagine him just being there, minding in those business? And he feels all the blood go into everyone and just goes, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> because now, instead of focusing on just murdering what? one more person to, to, to end the curse of the thorn, now there's there are seven other people that he has His to murder. Going yeah. Off. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Don't have yeah. any kids. But yeah, that, yeah, that would have been uh, Halloween Bad Blood, that one was oh going to be called. Oh my God. And like... Yeah. The one girl, the one girl that got it was was like a cancer patient. The one guy was like a, a, obsessed with serial killers and, and had all this Michael memorabilia in his house. There was a guy that had OCD that got it, and they and they read the part of the script with him where like Michael's chasing him and he gets to like a room with tile and he can't walk on any of the cracks. <laughs> So Michael's at, after him, and he's like slowly, like trying to walk on each individual tile and not touch cracks. I think you're talking me into this movie. And then, and then he finds like a, like a penny on the ground, and he I has to wanna... stop and pick it up. And like it's just like everything dumb. Yeah, yeah. everything dumb is like m- making him go slower while he's like trying Michael to goes escape. To hit Michael him and he ducks, he yeah, punches he the mirror. He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i couldn't i i just want to see the the first 20 minutes of that movie where they explain that she has to keep bringing blood in. <laughs> here i'm gonna need this next halloween <laughs> so you might as well get it in here now like the, the nurse is like all right new person welcome to the job yeah. uh this room is our blood room this room is only reserved for this person because she gets hunted by her brother <laughs> quite frequently so we have a special room for her <laughs> I see you have something pulled up here. I see you like all queued up. Oh, uh, yeah. I got to backtrack. It took me too long to find out when you were talking about the <laughs> evil dead. Um. Oh, wow. Yeah. Bruce Campbell yeah. reading. Uh, yeah. It's a Bruce, Cam- uh, Bruce Campbell with reading rainbow, but he has a Necronomicon. Book, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he reads it on TV. That, and- that makes me think of a uh, creep show last season mm. when they had the episode with Ted Raimi, oh, when it was like a public like access show. And yeah. He brought the, the Necronomicon on. I've been watching a lot of uh, on Netflix the, on the movies who made us. Yep. And there's a ton of horror movies yep. on this one. Like this season, they just, it seemed like all they dedicated to was all horror and, and sci-fi. And they did all horror, sci-fi, and coming to and America. Coming to America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. It's like it's like Halloween. Yeah, I was like, oh, Halloween, Friday the Thirteenth, the Nightmare on Elm Street, Alien. Robocop, <laughs> Alien. Robocop, coming, coming to, to America. America. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> eddie murphy was uh, the funny part about coming to america is eddie murphy was just giving away the props and they're like you're gonna bankrupt us like <laughs> you know the scene where they had all the louis vuitton cases uh-huh. eddie would just show up at his posse and be like you guys want those take them and they're like that's our props <laughs> oh, yeah. like everyone had like rolexes they just that- did the new one right that just came out i've never i haven't seen it yet neither i didn't Wesley Snipes is in it yeah, and they said that Eddie had such a good time playing like the the white Jewish guy in Kyle. He's like, I he like, as soon as they put the makeup on, he he would just wouldn't shut up, mm-hmm. and he just stayed in character the whole time. I thought it was really funny, good movie. But yeah, that was the new season is a lot of is horror movie sci fi, and then coming to America is really funny. Um, learned a lot about my uh, Halloween that I didn't know about. Learned a lot about Alien that I didn't know about. Um, good stuff, good stuff. All right, let's get our last beer here cracked open and uh, let's wrap this up. You gotta go to volleyball soon. Yeah. Dan, if you're still watching, you want to join us for the next episode. It won't be live. We're gonna post record it. You can start leaving your house now and shoot over. Is he still there? Who else I don't know. Watching? I don't know who's watching. Well, people watch, but they don't. They don't comment, well, which is fine. There's two people. Yeah. All right, Bob. What do we? What do we got here for Bru- Bruja? <laughs> Chancelazzo Survivor, Pina. Quinapa lychee. Uh, this is also listed as a New England hazy IPA. It comes in at six percent. 
Uh, it has been logged in a total of 10 times. Wow. Um, an Isla IPA made with pineapple, quinapa, which I hope I'm pronouncing right, which is a Spanish lime, and lychee fruits. Uh, the flavor profile is lychee, flat, and stone fruit. You 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 did better than I would have done with it, Bob. I would have butchered that. <laughs> There's like a grandma throwing a sandal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I actually was in a uh, conversation. So that's the chancla, the sandal, or flip-flop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so you, survived, you survived your mom throwing flip-flops at you. <laughs> Fun fact. Mama, uh, my mom was a it. monster with a shoe. It's got like the numbers in the back that reminds me of um, Matrix. Matrix, yeah. You got to be the Matrix to avoid the shoes. <laughs> I, I think that's what think. they're going for. It's supposed, yeah. To, yeah. So this is cool, man. Um, it, it's it. I would appear that this is a very. Is there a write up on Untapped about this brewery? I'm gonna look that up real quick while you guys are pulling this up. Because uh, it kind of like when Andy brought um. The beer from the red beard place and the whole it kind of leans into a culture or leans into a story or leans into a person uh this is kind of cool it's very um well, Sp spanish orientated on, on that one yeah bruja brewing company founded in springfield massachusetts in 2020 so this is a pandemic brewery committed to producing high quality uh craft beers and spirits and they make spirits too. Our intention is to capture many cultures and historic of the Caribbean community, all, all while reconnecting to the Afro-Indigenous roots. The attention of the uniqueness is the island cultures and the uh, use of ingredients is native to these islands. Enhanced appreciation of distinctive and uh, authentic tastes that are brought in, brought to life by our selections of uh, brujas, witches, or brews. Yeah. So this is kind of taking a bunch of different cultures and smashing them together and they use that heavily in their in their product, which is really fucking cool. I'm into that. Too bad they're so far away. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, really into that. I think that's super cool. And it, this is pretty, pretty wild. So oh, they only have three beers they've ever made. That can't be right, right? That's all I saw. Yeah, they've only made three beers. Don't love that. And one. we've had two, two. of them. <laughs> Tell you what, for brand new. The two beers that we've had here today, out of the three they've made total in a year, so they're not they're not really like Pilgaru. Within a year already, their first brewing company, they they've had a ton. They, they have at least one or two new beers a week. Yeah. Oh, so, you know, Pilgaru was on there as a home brewer for a long time. Too. That's very true. So yeah, we don't know the background of this, but I mean, maybe they take more time into making their beers because they're still learning and they're trying to figure things out. I don't I don't know if if you if if the brewers are watching this. We tag you. And if you're watching this, let us know. We'd love to have you on and talk to you. Um, that goes for um, uh, Drunken Rabbit as well. We always try to talk to the brewers and we we open the doors by trying your beers. And if you want to come on via Zoom, uh, Zoom call and talk to us, we're, we're down. But uh, I will say this out of the two beers. I mean, I haven't tried this one yet. Maybe I, I should I like it. hold my reserve here. I like the first one better. They're both solid. They're yep. both solid beers. That's really cool. Yeah, so I said uh, it was on the bottling can list. I, I had never heard of the brewery before, so um, uh, they actually had all three on the list, but the the, the third one was sold out, so I couldn't get one. But yeah, I, I like um, I like the uh, the uh, fact that they're they're mixing cultures and stuff. It ended up being a good pick. Yeah, that was a very good pick. Um, I'm gonna try to type this in on Untapped and find it here. This is a so this is a title and a half, the Pina. I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to try because I'm going to probably... Just go for Bruja. I'm going to yeah. say something. Good call. There's only three to find. I was already on that fucking whole thing. <laughs> or, or, or go to friends and look for me and Bill. Yep. All right. What are you thinking of this beer? We'll go. We'll start for you. Me? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I like it. Uh, uh, again, a little bit of the pineapple. Uh, I get the lychee. Uh, the The lime is definitely there underneath it. Uh, it's still light bodied. It doesn't weigh it down. What is um, a lychee? Um, it's a smaller citrus fruit. It looks kind of like a um, like a, a do you unpeeled know what a, grape. <laughs> yeah, they're they're but um, it's it's it's, it's a smaller citrus fruit. It's not mm -hmm. as common. I'm trying to remember oh. where they're from originally. Isn't it like Asia? 
I've, I, I always say it tastes like a floral apple, if that makes sense. Like it has that, mm-hmm. like, uh, like it's citrusy, but it still has like has like a crispness to it of like, of of like an apple or something as well. But that might just be my taste buds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking up right now. Lychee. Oh, that's what I was. Yeah. Oh, they 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 look like. <laughs> they look like, they look like unshaved nuts. <laughs> like a like like a, a spiky strawberry. Yeah. Mm, I've never seen them like not peeled. Is it? Is it a stone fruit, technically? Well, there also is stone fruit in this, too, right? That's what that's the ingredient. It says evergreen tree. So Southeast very, Asia. So berry family. I uh, know. Well, maybe I was wrong about it being citrus then. Interesting. Well, that's another cool thing. You, every time you're out, you try to find like different fruit that actually bring on. What did we have last time? The d- uh, dried the, version of the jackfruit. 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 Yeah. Well, yeah, I Which, ate the whole thing after you guys watched yeah, it. She <laughs> housed it. <laughs> It was good, wasn't it? It was pretty good, yeah. yeah. See, but that's the thing. Like, like I said before, I actually I was in international supermarkets twice where they actually had, but like the smallest jackfruit was ten pounds. Yeah, and it's a baby. Yeah, but it's, it's a big baby. So that that was it. Might not have been quite as good as as, as a, a fresh fruit, but it was better than lugging a bowling ball around for a week. Or Absolutely. Whatever. All right, well let's uh let's get into our beer of the night. So we're head to head competition between uh, Bruja and and um, Drunken Rabbit. I will say this: both breweries really cool. Um, the Mule Kick is 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 the most interesting out of the bunch. I will say that right off the bat. That is a that is a definitely that's a novelty specialty beer. It's it's crazy. It's that was the rest of them are kind of ones you've you've probably experienced before with the Oktoberfest. Um, the uh, but the, the the fruited style like the fruited IPAs, but uh, we'll start with uh, we'll start with Heidi as a non beer drinker. If you had to drink a beer out of these four, now for for full dis- it's p- transparency, Heidi is not a beer drinker whatsoever. Does not drink. Does not do anything. So she's just going by. So this is I'm interested to hear what you would say if you had to pick your beer of the night of these four. Um, I would probably go with the ginger one. The but ginger like, one. Sip it like on ice because it doesn't have that beer taste okay there you go everything Bill. else had a beer taste i'm gonna go with the oktoberfest oktoberfest i think we're gonna have a tie here uh, I, I love the ginger beer i <laughs> still by far my best of the bunch i'm gonna go oktoberfest so we're gonna have <laughs> I, i'm a sucker for oktoberfest i love that time of the year that's my favorite but so the beer of the night is going to be a two-way tie between oktoberfest and mule kick now, for part two, what I would say my f- second favorite would be is going to be the Spanish Fly. That one smelled fantastic, tasted really good. I, I, I'd go for mm-hmm. that yep. too. Yeah. Me too. All right, so there's our beer of the night. Uh, will be a tie between both Drunken Rabbits and then Bruja Brewing Company is going to take home second, and I, I would guess third <laughs> um, with <laughs> both default. of their beers. But I will say this: for only having three beers on their lineup, uh, I'm interested in hearing like they said they have spirits and stuff. We, but I mean, but the, there's no stinkers on this table. Not at all. No. Not any uh-huh. these. None of these beers are like I wouldn't have again. Even the the mule. I, I would say for me, the last place one for me just would be the mule kick because it's so out off the wall different, and it'd be something that I would be like, I'm glad I tried it, but it would I wouldn't I wouldn't go back to it if that makes any sense. Um, just because I'm not a huge ginger fan, and there's a lot going on. Like you got to be prepared for that. <laughs> you know what I mean, oh, like, uh, you know, speaking of that. Um... I didn't. I didn't put anything else in the glass. I had that in, so this has been out here for what, like a good close to half oh, hour. Yeah. yeah. Every, I didn't put every, anything else in mine either because it's a real strong every, flavor. Everybody else. I I it. just put water in I, my. Is my it going to be glass? real spicy? <laughs> I'm afraid. You can see how much <laughs> pepper came out. I left a little bit of my glass for the. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't put anything yeah, else in I just because it was it. very strong. I can't. It's so tough on the nose for me. It has like just a sulfury part. No, and then just dirty drinkers. Yeah, big difference. Yep. Yeah, there's more like. All right, so. Yeah. When it's warmer, it's less ginger and more peppery. Yeah, yeah. for sure. It's actually way better warmer. I, I can feel the warm going down my throat. Yeah, yeah. the the heat of the pepper. The pepper is definitely here. stronger. Pineapple's a little muted. It almost it almost yeah, drinks like a a a cayenne pepper seltzer at this point. Like because the the I think the pepper when it gets warmer, uh, mixes with the ginger a lot better. So it's not that gingery. It's more of the the pepper. Yeah, that's a great call. But I actually like it better warmer as well. 
That's good. That's that's a cool beer. That's a fun beer. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bob, what are you wearing today, t-shirt wise? What do you got to plug? Uh, Catamount Brewery. Uh, this was our first stop in Vermont when we crossed over from New Hampshire. Um, and actually, uh, uh, I'm gonna mess up the name of the. But we'll skip the name of the place. But um, uh, it, it's if if you look on your Untapped or on Google Maps, it shows that it's Harpoon or the UFO Brewery. A UFO brewery. Uh, UFO is like a sub brand under Harpoon. Oh, okay. They they tend to be Hefeweizens that have different flavors. But um, this makes so really so um, it was uh they had Harpoon beers, they had the UFO series, uh, they had the Catamount beer. Uh, I think there was two separate series of uh, uh, seltzers that they carried, and uh, um, on top of that, uh, right across the parking lot was a distillery. Did you bring home any catamount? Um, just thinking because you had all, I, 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 there might be a can of the their anniversary IPA yet because I, I have some stragglers that I'll, I'll bring in as like sidebars cool. for the main brewery. But uh, I, I know I brought some home, I can't remember if it was a single can or a four pack. Yeah, so we are sitting on a few episodes that uh, from a few a few weeks ago because we we uh we normally do one live and then after we get done recording live, we do a second episode that we shoot and then put up later. So we're still sitting on a uh, North, the North Brewing Company and Friends. So it's a little a collaboration episode with different brews. We're sitting on a Trogues episode. There's still the last Patreon episode, number 10, that we haven't released. I don't even remember that one. <laughs> um, so we do have a, a second episode we are going to record today um, that uh, it's going to be coming out. So be on the lookout for that. I, I, exactly, what breweries are on that one? Um. It's four of the same ones with the normal size cans, and then two. Uh, Queen Queen City. Okay. Uh, I think it was three 12 ounce cans from that, and then uh, uh, the the sidebar beers were uh, one from Outlaw Brewing in New Hampshire, and um, I can't remember now. I have to look at the picture. That's all right. Um, what are you wearing today? What do you got to plug? Uh, I'm assuming the next three people are wearing the same company. And it's fright right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I I, actually, I don't know what mine. No, is. yours is from uh, Spirit of Halloween. Yeah. I got the uh, on my Halloween dad hat. I got on a <laughs> Joe Bob Briggs style uh, shirt, like Sergeant Pepper's. Only in is that the Tammy background. the T Rex on there? Yeah. Say. <laughs> so only in the background, it's all like kind of like. A different the, horror movies. The type I, I, of horror movies so that I he see, would show. I see a hag, Hannibal, a Cannibal Holocaust. Um, I see Tammy and the T Rex. Hills have eyes. Hills have eyes. I can't tell. That, oh, that's that's that what was the one you were talking about. It looks like which zombie one? Nazis. That's what he looks like. Anyway. Nazi zombies. I don't know if that's what he is, but I'm not sure. That's pretty wild, though. It's pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. Sleepaway so, camp. Does Joe? What does Joe Bob do? Does he review movies? No, he'll just kind of like host a show, and it's actually also on Shutter. Mm. Um, so he'll do like litter, like little in interstitials in between the movie. So when it would go to like a commercial break, it's just him talking about like behind the scenes stuff for the movie or like it's such a like lost facts art. about them it should, and that it should kind come of stuff. Back. Sometimes he's but, guests, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like I haven't really seen a lot, but I saw a couple like TNT. TNT is getting really, really good at putting movies on television, yeah. like and really decent movies. On like now, obviously, you're gonna get them censored and stuff like that, but like I feel like if you have a, a streaming service, so like Peacock or who, well, because I, I think with Joe Bob originally he was on TNT back in the day on like a Friday, like later Friday nights, later Saturday yeah. nights, he would pick like and, and curate like like on off the wall horror movies mm -hmm. and he would show them on there and then he'd talk about them. Yeah. I just think it's and a then, lost art where it happens in TV and radio where they just kind of put something on it. It's set to premiere and then there's no passion to it. There's like, I kind of like, it's kind of when I do this podcast, I know it's, it's stressful. It's hard. I have to m manage six things at once with the chat and everything like that. But I, I feel that live interactive thing is, is important. And I think it's cool to have, where instead of just setting it and forget it, like, and now I'm saying this as we re we're gonna have a set it and forget it episode next yeah. week, but, but I just think that going to commercial break and paying someone to be like, hey, the, while you're on commercial, check this out. Here now we're back to the movie. I like that, like the Elvira thing, the Joe Bob yeah. thing. Like I always thought that was a cool um, idea. I like, I'd rather that than like 
actual commercials. Like a yeah. radio, like, like a lot of radio you listen to is not even live anymore. They just like do their like, hey, coming up next is gonna be this song. Have a great day, w blah, blah, blah. and then it plays, and then they're not even in studio anymore. They just they just they set it for a week, play that playlist for a week, and then they may come into work and just record it again, which I understand budget costs. Some of them times are, are from home still. Times are tough, but it's just like it kind of loses that that luster for me. Mm-hmm. I like that be there talk to your audience engage like let's have a good time like call in request a song like you can't even it's hard to request a song if you're not actually in the studio Uh, i just think that's a lost art you know but yeah it's a cool shirt heidi what do you got halloween you're wearing the halloween you got that from uh spirit of halloween yeah and it's who makes it though yeah i forget the brand of that shirt but they're really cool anything you want to plug i know i always say you're pretty you're getting better with the local community and finding different things and cool things to put over can't think of anything not cool in high school <laughs> thank you <laughs> header's like oh, i have nothing to plug i'm like you're on three other shows <laughs> uh yeah not cool in high school you can check out heidi our last episode was halloween kills mm-hmm. uh we tried to have the iron maiden hide and feel on uh she she uh what had some connection issues and then got a little sick so we are rescheduling that that is going to be happening uh so we just got to set that up she's like oh well, we're just doing it tomorrow i was like no nah, sorry unfortunately I got other things going on. I can't just drop things. Unfortunately, she's really cool, but it's just tough. But we'll get her on. Um, Cool. We don't even have a topic for next uh, that one yet. But then we just came up with our topic for Truth Behind Illusion, which is going to happen Sunday. Or I mean, it's not a Sunday. Tuesday. Tuesday. It's going to be the Fae. Not Heidi's mom, (laughs) but the Fae, which is like a a, 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 a fairies, gnomes, Gnomes. goblins, and stuff like that. Little creatures. Little creatures. The (laughs) Fae. The wee folk. The wee folk. Yes. (laughs) So it's, it's, uh, a lot of cool stuff there. I don't know much. I knew about the idea of these characters, but are these characters, sorry, creatures, because they're 100 <laughs> percent real. Um, that uh, but I guess the Fae is the ultra dimension they live in before they come to our universe or dimension and cause havoc. They just like go through like a Tom and Jerry hole in the wall, come in, steal your spoons, and then dip your spoons <laughs> and your left socks. Only, yeah. Only the left socks. Yep. How do you know which one's left? I know. You don't, but they know. <laughs> Oh, okay. They're like, that's the left one. You have to match that's the one he always puts on his left foot. I know. Big toe holes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are they, that's what they do too. They, 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 if they can't steal it, they chew a hole in it, and then they. That's leave. where those holes. Yeah. Are. Oh. Fucking bastards. Where's the little ones? The, the el- what was it, that movie when we were kids? Elves and the Shoemaker. I never. Do you remember that. that? Uh, but, uh, oh, like a little like, cartoon movie. I don't know. It was like this shoemaker guy, and he had like little elves, and they would. He didn't know that they were there. At first, and then overnight, like he was trying to make his shoes and stuff, and then overnight they would come in and, like make all of the shoes like real cool. You, and then he found them, so he made them little outfits. <laughs> Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm kind of remembering this now. <laughs> you know what we fucked me up as a kid, and then I watched it as all. I'm like, why did this get popular? Remember the Indian and covered? Yeah, yeah. This is the dumbest. I'm, I remember watching that in grade school and thinking, yeah. like, why are we watching this? <laughs> I was like, this, is, this is stupid, <laughs> right? Am I the only one who thinks this is dumb? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you're like 10 years old in the classroom just looking around at everyone being like, are we enjoying this? <laughs> <laughs> remember when they used to like put like a, a movie on like during like cafeteria? Like they just like kids just like sit there and watch our, 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 our movie for whatever reason every Christmas they w- we would watch Cool Runnings. Cool, cool running <laughs> yes i don't know why <laughs> they're they're like trying to a diversify Christmas us. movie they yeah. like, did the polar express uh, one they took list. us all to the auditorium and we watched oh, polar express. <laughs> but you watched that i have in high school it was like mm, no don't say middle, no it wasn't polar it was. express oh you're right polar express no the train it was you weren't in seventh grade when did it come out Heck, I, I, worked, Tom Hanks one. I worked in the movie theater when that was and you're not that much younger than me I worked in the theater when that movie dropped. I don't know, but it was like somewhere seventh, eighth, or ninth grade. You're getting, you're, you're moving up higher every year. I don't think it was ninth though. I maybe it was senior year. I don't know. I might have been out of high school. (laughs) Yeah, because I worked in the theater, and I just remember like wanting to kill myself because it would just be like hot chocolate. It was 2004. So I was, I was in eleventh grade. Maybe it was like ninth grade. Yeah, I was in eleventh grade. So I, 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 holy shit! I worked in the movie theater while I was still in high school. I didn't. Yeah, I did. Totally did. That's the only one, right? The Tom Hanks one. Yeah, yeah. I just I hated cleaning the theater after because it would play all the music and I thought it was awful. It's terrible. I did the Polar Express train. That was fun. Oh, 
<laughs> no thanks. All right, that'll do it. Uh, Anger Beers podcast. Thank you guys so much. Remember, uh, if you if you got this far, screenshot this. If you're listening to it, uh, leave a review on Apple. If you're on that platform, follow us on all social media. We have a lot of cool stuff coming up. We have a lot of episodes in the bank. If you guys are like, hey, drop one on a Thursday or a Wednesday, we'll give you an extra episode. It just ask for it and you shall receive. Just show some kind of engagement. Let us know you're still there. You you, you care. It helps. Um, that's all we got. Thank you guys so much. We love you. Enjoy your Halloween. Stay safe. Hand candy out. Uh, Eat lots of candy. Don't put razor blades in kids' candy. That's that's messed up. <laughs> Give the parents booze and edibles. It'll be a great time. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time. We're out of here.